Before we get started, we would like to thank our sponsor, the Lucky Win Affiliate Program. Home to the internationally recognized casino brand, Casino Lucky Win, affiliate partners have the chance to earn a 45% commission on net revenue, take advantage of cutting edge marketing tools, get instant access to real-time stats, and get expert support from the Lucky Win affiliate team. Plus, take advantage of featuring Lucky Win special player promotions, such as their welcome bonus of $5,000 for the first 10 depositors your players send. Visit the Lucky Win Affiliates listing in the CAP directory and join today. Special thanks to the Lucky Win Affiliates program for making this video interview possible. Hey everyone, I'm Warren Jolly with CasinoAffiliatePrograms.com and I want to welcome you to today's interview with Dave Schneider. Dave is a world-renowned authority on link marketing with strengths both in organic and paid search marketing. As a speaker on the topics of search marketing and social media, he's advised some of the world's largest companies. Uh, Dave began his career in on, uh, online as a well-respected internet marketing consultant. He's spoken around the world on topics of search marketing and social media and has consulted for some of the world's largest companies on these topics. He's also been an educator and writer in past careers. Um, Dave's passion shifted from purely a marketing focus as he worked with more and more entrepreneurs to building profitable companies to the creation, construction, and management of startups. This passion was the inspiration behind Dave's current company, Steelcast. In today's interview, Dave will share his thoughts about SEO and offer some SEO tips for affiliates in the iGaming industry. Dave, it's great to have you. Can you uh, take a minute or two and let our audience know how you got started in SEO, particular, particularly within the iGaming industry? Yeah, um, the, the, uh, the story of me getting an SEO is actually better than iGaming. I mean, I got into iGaming because that's where all the money is, right? So like, sure. the most money's in gaming, so you go to gaming. Uh, but I got into SEO, I used to be a teacher, and I got tired of being broke. And so I started messing around on the internet, um, and I started my own blog. It was a sports blog, and I just really quickly figured out how to game the system with Google. Um, and I was actually looking for a copywriting gig, and I kind of lied my way into my first job for a marketing gig. And within a year, I owned my own company, and I was working for, you know, uh, different people, but you know, we made a lot of our money for my first consultancy jobs in payday loans and in gambling. Because again, that's where um, pe people made the most money from organic search, so that's where they were willing to pay the most. Um, so that's what we did. I mean, a lot of the people that we worked with in iGaming were some of the people that took US players, so um, my work hasn't been as much in iGaming <laughs> probably over the past year as it was before, but um, you know, that's how I got started. Great. So what are some of the other verticals uh, that you're currently involved in besides iGaming, just to give our audience some perspective? Um, we've always done a lot of finance work, um, payday loans, obviously. We're still working in payday loans. Um, along with that, we do some travel work. I mean, there's really technology. There's really not a, lot, a space I haven't worked in extensively over my career because we, if it's work that I've done for clients or large agencies or large companies, um, you know, it's kind of taking me in every vertical. So I kind of have an interesting perspective on everything because I know like a lot of guys in the gaming vertical, for example, they just stick within the gaming vertical. Um, that's not really the case for me. You know, I've been fortunate enough to kind of see everything and it helps me out, I think, kind of pinpoint what's going on in different places. Got it. And tell us a little bit about Steelcast. I mean, what does the company do? What do you specialize in? I know obviously SEO is a big component, but is there anything else that you offer in terms of services to clients? Yeah, Steelcast is actually an incubator. And so we um, we incubate marketing companies. So right now we have a company called Copy Press and our uh, incubator that is a content cycle company. We do everything from the content, copy, infographics, videos, to content placement. So traditional link building of sorts, where we take really good content, get it put on sites social seeding for that content, and then also conversion optimization. Um, and then we have a company called Perform Now, which is more of your traditional SEO work, but um, it's it's more audit driven. Because um, to be honest, and I guess we'll get into this more as the interview goes on, the old way of doing SEO, uh, just link linking and, and building lots of links just doesn't work anymore. It's become more of a, a content and a, um, a technical kind of game. Sure. Okay, so let's get into that. Uh, just talking about the ever-evolving landscape of SEO. I mean, there's been some major changes in Google's algorithm. 
uh, within the last few weeks, as everybody knows. This is the most important topic we know for our community in terms of SEO itself. So um, hearing from you as an expert, I mean, can you help us to you know, differentiate between Google Penguin and Google Panda 3.6? And then I think there was another Panda update beyond 3.6 that recently was announced. So why do, why did these updates come so close to one another and what do they really mean for, for affiliates and for webmasters? Yeah, I mean, so for webmasters as a whole, uh, what needs to be understood is that Google has taken a really aggressive stance, and this is more so of my personal opinion, against organic search. And it's a business call, right? Um, because there's a lot of money being made and spent on SEO and organic search. Um, and you know, it's obviously there's been a gauntlet thrown down against um, SEOs um, and people doing SEO practices. Um, and you, you can see that even in really competitive verticals that used to be left alone, even in gaming right now, right? Gaming used to be a place where if you could go and buy your links, they really wouldn't mess with you, they'd burn somebody every once in a while. But even that space now, right? People are getting taken down. Um, and what people are going to have to do is learn, and I, it's weird because I've been saying this at CAP, uh, you know, conferences for a while, is like learn how to play more by the rules. Um, and there's a way to do it, right? There's a way to kind of play by the rules and win. And I always throw out the example, like Bodog, for example. You know, Bodog, they did a lot of their SEO not around, like they obviously were doing link buying and stuff. Everybody does, right? But they were doing a lot of the prop bet kind of viral stuff. And like, you know, they always had a really great brand. Um, take that strategy with things. So, um, you know, the difference between, and, and this is something good to know is, you should always have webmaster tools hooked up in for your site and you can go to SEO Moz and see with all the different Google update changes happened and if you're wondering which one of them affected your site you should go to webmaster tools and see when your or analytics and when your traffic dropped and how it correlates to one of those updates um, and that will give you a good indicator of which one those might have been and then slowly over the next couple months they usually tell you what that is uh, but it's not always as clear as you know. This these are this is the update. These are the changes that were made. This is what the effect of my site is. So it's going to take, you know, could take a process amount of time to get things done. Um, so that's why I think too, getting educated at places like you know uh, affiliate programs or going to um, different forums, right, and checking what you're doing before you just start going crazy on your site. Because the other thing that we're seeing a lot of, and, and SEOs are commenting on it, is Google saying, well, just start over with a new site. It's just how could somebody do that? You know, there's so much time and money invested in these portals. It's like saying to a guy who owns a dry cleaner whose business is down, just burn down the building and go yeah. build a new dry cleaner. You know, it's, it's not really an option. So um, the biggest thing I'll tell you is that we're seeing lots of people recuperating from both Panda and Penguin, right? And Pan Panda, remember, is a algorithm so that is one that's geared towards you know better content and this penguin is manual is filters right algorithmic filters for spam um, so if you've been penguin there's a way to get out of it and if you've been if you've been panda there's a way to get out of it but the two things aren't the same and so that's why again it's important to differentiate see which update affected you do some small testing before you just start making major changes to your sites as well Okay. So some of these affiliates that have been hit by either uh, algorithmic change, I mean, some guys we've heard from, they were doing, you know, for example, 200 depositors a month and it's dropped to 30. A lot of these guys are really scared that their rankings will never come back. I mean, do you, do you believe that to be true? Are there any instances where these updates are basically going to put these guys out of business? Or do you think that no matter what, if you do the right things, you can come back to where you were potentially even better? Yeah, I think no matter what, you could come back. Um, what it's going to take is so it's a calculation for you. How spammy did you go, right? If you build like two hundred thousand links and you bought them from all different sources, it's going to take you forever to clean that thing up, and it might not be worth spending the time. It might be the same amount of time to rebuild a new portal. Now, if you were just if you actually had a good brand, right? You built a great brand, good content, and you happen to get in the mix of like a site wide link, it's obviously worth going and taking that down and bouncing back. But I haven't heard, I mean, I've heard some stories of people that have had mixed results coming back. But again, Penguin just hit in April, right? Um, so we're really not that far into this whole thing. It feels like it, obviously, for some people. But um, 
until we're 12 months in and people haven't recuperated, you know, nobody can say whether nobody can come back yet. Got it. Um, now, I have heard of people that have had, before Penguin, a hard time re getting back from Panda. Um, I really think it comes down to how much money and time are you willing to spend versus starting a new portal, right? Um, and that's, that's the really crappy thing that Google's put in front of us. And that's why, to me, because a lot of people that I talk to are like small affiliates and business owners that are getting hurt by this. It's never the big companies, you know? The big companies seem to like, you know, bounce right back or, sure. uh, you know. Um, so I, I think it's just one of those things on an individual basis you have to decide, are you able to take 12 months of being down um, before you make significant moves and, and to test things and, and make good calls. If you can't, then I think it's time to rebuild and, and okay. go from there. And just so. to clarify, if you say when you're weighing the, the cost benefit of um, building a new portal versus getting cleaning up your links, after you build that new portal, is it do you do you agree with the strategy that a lot of affiliates are looking at in terms of three hundred one ing the pr the prior site, you know, doing three hundred one redirect, or do, or are you talking about doing something from scratch and just building scratch? It yeah, don't. Yeah. 301. I've done some testing with the 301s. Absolutely, it's going to follow you and poison you again. Okay. Um, you know, uh, so definitely just let it die. Like if, you, if you have a site that's that poisoned, right, like you just bought tons of links from networks and they're not taking them down, um, you just want to get rid of it. Now, one strategy you could do is test this new strategy of 404. So let's say you already have players that are coming back to you because you have a forum on your site and you want to keep it. Uh, 404 in pages where you actually place links um, so that way when the server when it hits the server it will say it's not there uh, Google's saying that that's a, a way to do this also keep in mind that they're supposed to be coming up with a disavow tool and webmaster tools pretty soon um, and I would I would tell anybody to wait to see if that happens in August um, before making any moves because that could be a really useful tool as well to get a lot of this cleaned up um, but I mean, those are the steps that I would take okay. for sure. How about link buying? I mean, uh, the thought is the Penguin update takes link buying pretty seriously. So what other strat strategies can be used to acquire links for affiliates? Um, yeah, <laughs> I'll sound like Matt Cuts, but uh, really good strategies revolve around creating good content and going out and getting it placed places, right? Now, that's hard for the gaming vertical. Within the gaming vertical for poker and bingo, for example, it's really easy, right? Bingo and poker are kind of social games, and you can create content on them and get it put on mommy blogs or, you know, whatever. Uh, but when you talk about, like, hardcore casino, casino is hard as hell to get links to. Um, at the end of the day, in gaming, you're probably still going to have to buy links. It's about being smarter when you buy the links, making sure they're in content, that you scope out the site to make there's no make sure there's no spam on the site. Um and again, even that's hard, right? Because a lot of people won't sell links to casino sites. Um, but I think what you're going to look at as an affiliate is a mixed strategy. You want to build a brand, right? You want to have really good content on your site. And then you want to also create content to place on other sites. And you may have to pay for that placement in the gaming space. That's just the way it's going to go, right? Um, I would stay away from these sidebar and footer links and all of these kind of text link deals that traditionally have been done by affiliates they're just not going to work anymore and they're going to hurt you mm -hmm. and that's the strategy people should go it should be really a mixed strategy and again the best thing i always tell people is there's a path out there that's already labeled a lot of the big casinos for example you've noted they haven't fallen anywhere right so go take a look at what they've done they have really smart seos working for them and say okay they're doing a mixed deal of link building and buying and, and brand links coming in so it's so hard for them to actually get torched, right? And that's the strategy that should be replicated over and over again. Interesting. Okay. Now, all these things that we've been hearing about, like author rank, duplicate content, um, you know, Google getting a little bit stricter on that, and all these other various content-related SEO elements. I mean, are these major things to pay attention to from an affiliate standpoint? Um, is Google paying less attention to the technical side of SEO? What do all these buzzwords really mean for affiliates? I mean, I think duplicate content definitely is serious. Uh, if, you're, if you have content on your site that you're get, you were getting traffic from in February, um, you might not be getting traffic from it now because it came from somewhere else. Uh, or even it might be your content and somebody else is outranking you for it. Um, in terms of authorship, that's a great one. 
Uh, and so I'll give you a, a good example of how that could benefit a gaming affiliate is say you have a poker blog, you write a lot of stuff on poker. You also guest blog on a bunch of your friends' sites, right? Well, if you tied all of those sites together via authorship, which is where you have an author page on your blog, and then that ties to your Google Plus page, what Google's doing is connecting that all of those posts are written by the same author. And so essentially it passes value from each of those sites back to each of those sites, right? And so you're able to siphon off, it's the same thing as linking, uh, able to siphon off some of the value to bring to your site. So if you're, it's a great tactic even outside of link building to get some authority over to your page. Um, because what Google's doing to doing there is they're doing a couple things. One, they're saying, okay, how important is this author so we can actually get their content to say, oh, you know, this author is really important in this vertical poker, right? The second thing is kind of verifying that it's a real person writing this, right? Um, and that it's trusted. So when people link to it, they're like, oh, it's a real person. It's a trusted person on poker. So if people link back to it, we can trust this. So um, I think authorship is something that people should definitely use. It also means you get that little blog picture in the SERPs, mm -hmm. which increases your click-through rank uh, rate, right? So um, I think there's a lot of value shipping in the authorship approach. Um, and affiliates that are running blogs on their sites, uh, that's a place where I think, you know, they – a mixture of that and guest posting and content placement is a really viable strategy right now to increase value from link building because the game isn't isn't any more about volume of links it's about quality right so it's not about getting a thousand links with a certain anchor text it's about getting you know 50 links with mixed anchor text from better sites and content with authorship right like uh and so you start to see like technical SEO in some senses has become less important. It's more about linking and content. Um, it's the art form part of it. Technical SEO still is though very important. Um, you know, like if you go, if you have a very live site, let's say you have a forum with a hundred thousand pages and you make a significant change to that forum and structure um, and you aren't using best practices from an SEO standpoint, technical best practices, you, you're you going to get hurt from that, right? So uh, in terms of ongoing SEO efforts, I think definitely a, a more, you know, I guess uh, creative strategy. And it, it's funny because, again, it's something I've been saying for a long time in the casino space, and it's hard for people to wrap their minds around because it's so easy to go buy links. You know what I mean? It just is. Like, you go pay for a link, you get a link, you make money. Um, but now is the time. It just it's not going to work long term, you know. Okay. So besides authorship, is there anything else that new that Google's doing? Um, you know, in relation to that, obviously there's rich snippets. Um, there's a lot of talk about social signals. Is there anything else that you would say in the last six months per se has been more important, or that Google's paying more attention to along those lines? No, I mean, you know, a lot of those things have been around for a while, and so I think. There are things that all affiliates should be, you know, when you're an affiliate, you're, regardless of what vertical you're in, right, if you're in gaming, if you're, you know, selling refrigerators, you're always going to be an underdog to um, the guys that you're getting the affiliate money from, right, who are also spending marketing dollars on their own portals. And so the reality is that you need to find every way that you can be smarter and faster than they are. And so a lot of that goes to... Um, paying attention to things that are coming out on Google Google's blog, right? Making sure that you're keeping up with industry things so you can be the first guy to get rich snippets with stars or whatever you're going to do. Um, you know, in terms of things that Google's really putting out there to help SEOs or that are going to help in any way, I don't think that there's anything like that out there. I mean, I think authorship's the biggest thing, but we're not also seeing uh, like where that's blowing up people's um, strategy right now. I think that's a long-term play. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think the biggest thing, though, is, is see what these new things are, be willing to test them out before they start to get utilized by, you know, the guys who have the real budgets to start pushing things around. Got it. And I know that I, I think our audience probably can tell what the answer will be to this question, but in terms of link networks and uh, the value around them, is it even a viable strategy? Um, what are your thoughts? Um, I guess it would actually be different than what you thought. Like, 
uh, of course, a link network can have a, a value to it. Depends what the link network is, right? So if I went out and took 50 sites right now and built up the 50 sites and waited a year, um, and I only sold links to you for your site, that's an awesome link network. <laughs> like that's never probably going to get burnt down if I do it the right way. The issue is that these link networks aren't set that set up that way. They're set up in a way that they're abused. So the first post will be about cat crates. The next one will be about gambling. The next one will be about pills. The next one will be about fake weed or whatever. And so uh, it has no categorical like combination. All of the sites have links from the same people on them. Um, so those traditional link networks that are low cost and spun out articles and whatnot, yes, those are bad. Don't do those. If for some reason you find somebody selling links from a site and you're a gambling guy and you know the, the network's clean, nobody's ever done anything with it, and he's giving you exclusivity, don't say no just because it's a network of sites. You know what I mean? Um, and that's the difference is knowing, knowing what got hit. What got hit wasn't the fact that it was just a big network. The, what got hit was because it was a poorly constructed network of sites. Right? It was easy to figure out the footprint. Um, what I would say is if you're not technically savvy enough to understand the difference, don't buy the links on the network. Right? If it's if it's a massive sell, if there's a buy page like with a, a PayPal button, don't buy links from that network. Right? That's a good strategy. Um, but if it's like you know, your buddy has fifty. Uh, gaming news sites and he's going to give you some blog posts on those sites for five grand that might be a good deal you know Got it. so okay how about the recent page rank updates do they matter do they mean anything um, no I mean page rank so you know I, I don't believe any signals that Google gives us anyway about anything the biggest thing to look at with page rank is if all of a sudden you lost all of your page rank right if you went from a four to a zero um, you know what kind of effect is that having um, but overall they haven't meant anything for a while, um, and you know who knows what if the information they're even giving us from that is correct anyway. So, so if someone's selling a PR six link, you know, a couple of years ago, that link would have been more expensive than a PR four link. Obviously, are you saying that this day and age, don't pay attention to that? No, I mean what we use it for. So when we do uh, content placement kind of deals, we use PR as a. Um, a leveling off point so we say nothing under a PR2 right because ones and zeros are either going to show that it's really new or devalued um, but beyond that the metrics we use are things like uh, I think citation flow for Majestic uh, we use Moz rank right which is more of a true actual rank that's taken um, Moz trust is another one that we so we, we use third-party tools to give us our insight because we know that they're giving us the real insight into what's going on. And um, yeah, I mean, I've bought sites that are PR6s that have like three backlinks that are all crap. Huh. You know, I mean, there's no justification for why the site has that. And I've seen PR3s that are just like tons of amazing links in there. So, um, you know, in terms of that, you know, don't go out and start spending tons of money on a PR8 site until you've uh, you've gone through Majestic and SEO mods and verified that they really are that good. Okay. In, in terms of tools, you mentioned Majestic SEO and SEO mods. Are there, are there any other tools that you like or that you use? No, we use internal stuff that we build out. Um, and uh, we're probably going to be licensing out one of our pieces of software called Connection Seeker in the next six months, which is a uh, link building type of software. But... Again, it's not like a it's not like an X rumor or something where you just go create tons of links. It's hard work behind it too. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think SEO Ma oh uh, Kemper's tools, uh, link research tools is really good mm -hmm. as well. Um, I think those three, right? Um, if you use link research tools, I think they pull in Majestic anyway, so you can kind of just get it from link research tools. And then I like using Open Site Explorer just because it's so fast. Link research tools a little bit slower sometimes, so. I think between those, they're good. I like using Raven tools. If you have a bunch of sites, just to be able to rank, check, and manage stuff, it's really good. Um, those are probably the four that I would say to use. Got it. Okay. So um, I guess uh, this is kind of an open-ended question, but are there any gray hat techniques that you'd be willing to share with the audience, just things that you've found recently that are interesting or you've seen some traction on? Yeah, I mean, one that I shared actually when I was in uh, England the last time that – 
I still don't see people doing is uh, there's a pretty big opening in um, the local space, right? Mm -hmm. So you could, there's a couple ways you could go about that. One thing you can do, and it's actually funny, affiliates are picking up on this. When I was in England last time, I saw a couple of affiliates doing this. But you can actually go and find um, casinos. If you type in the word casino, even in the U.S. right now, a lot of local casinos will come up, right? Um, so I type in casino, like the Seminole Casino here will show up, but a bunch of other listings will come up. And those aren't always verified locations. So what you can do is actually um, verify the location, say that you're the person and claim the actual uh, address, right? Um, and then put in the new URL for your location, which is your website, right? And so you can instantly grab like a top 10 listing in Google for casino. It's only in one location, right? It's within like, you know, Tampa or LA or whatever, one portion of LA. Um, but that's one method. The other method is kind of a more long-term one is uh, you can go out and buy like a $300 uh, um, like kiosk and put it in an actual like 7-Eleven or something, right? That has the ability for somebody to sign up. So this would work better definitely in the UK or places that are open to gaming, but uh, it could still work in the States as well. You go and put it in the kiosk and just lets people play free poker or whatever. But now you have a kiosk there because if you look, if you actually do a Google search for Bank of America, sometimes you'll see ATM listings, right? So they're giving ATMs and red boxes the actual physical address that they're at. And so you can actually go and get a bunch of listings um, and start ranking for, you know, casino or poker, things like that. Mm. Um, on a geo-local level, which is kind of a cool way to start getting started driving some traffic if you're brand new, or even if you're not new, if you want to just get competitive for, for poker really quickly. The local space is something that most affiliates in general just have never looked at using. Um, so that's, that's actually more of a black hat method than a gray hat, I would say, because if you get caught doing that, they're going to completely kick you out of the index. A good gray hat technique is if you're going to buy links, um, point them all to a satellite site and then link from the satellite site to your site. That way, if you get torched, you can actually just turn off the satellite site from the linking. And that way, um, you can actually do that via 301 as well. That way you can turn it off and your site's healthy again, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're kind of running everything through a valve that you can shut off. And um, you can get more aggressive with your link buying that way. And just always remember to be really strategic about how you're sending the links. Don't mix them up, right? This term goes to this site. This term goes to that site. You know, and that way you can. That way, once you see the filter come, you know exactly where it's coming from. Interesting. So basically, be able to manage your inventory a lot easier than having to go out to a thousand sites and get yeah. a link removed if something goes wrong. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then once they become poison, you can shoot them at your competitor. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> All right, I think I think our audience will like that. Thanks for that. Um, yeah. those, those are things I've never even thought about. So awesome. Um, so just in terms of you know, I know you've worked with some iGaming affiliates in the space and and some other kind of big names that'll go unnamed in this interview. But um, what are some of the guys in iGaming uh, doing wrong? What are the common mistakes that you see that you kind of just you know see occurring again and again that guys should start uh, thinking about? You know, what's uh, I think the big well, not the big operators, but the smart operators I've talked to, they get it right. And so everybody else should look at what they're doing. And what these guys are doing is they're looking at the social space. They're looking at how to do great content. They're looking at building brands, right? Um, and not just about linking and, and about, you know, spamming things up. Um, the people that are going that route have had success and will continue to have success and have built a, real, a lot of stability for themselves. Um, and you know, I'll continue to keep preaching that because even if you're an affiliate, you can build a brand, you know what I mean? Building a brand, um, isn't hard. You know, it's just about creating content and getting, getting an audience to follow you. Uh, which again, in this space is great, especially if you're on a rev share basis, right? So now you're able to retain your players and, and get them to keep coming back and make sure you keep, you know, your whales coming in, you know, and, and churning the money. Um, but I think, you know, when you look at the big operators, they're doing the smart thing. They're, they're looking at what's coming next and they're saying, okay, we still have to link by to survive, but 
that's not just all we're going to do anymore. You know? sure. So the advice I would give is definitely look at it doing. Con- it's hard. Yeah, sure, it's kind of hard, but there's ways to get it done. You know, I mean, there's always creative ways. I've worked in every space, and I've done it in every space, casino, payday, it doesn't matter. Like, there's ways to create really good content and build organic links and get rankings in a sustainable way. So, Got it. Okay. And so for our industry in iGaming, I mean, a lot of affiliates are trying to move out of the U.S. market that, that live here, that work here. Or um, you know, successful affiliates in the European market are trying to move to other new emerging areas. What are the top three recommendations that you can give for an affiliate who's looking to diversify out of their core market and um, um, you know, rank internationally, if you will? Um, you know, for international ranking, it's really not that hard. The biggest thing is having because, like for example, it used to be important to host in the country. That with the with the invention of cloud computing, right, and, and that becoming really popular, that's not as important anymore because people might post on Amazon or whatever. Um, what you want to definitely have is a TLD, right, um, or you want to have a variation. So like you know, uh, UK dot you know whatever ABC dot com, and then DE dot ABC dot com, and then you want to have the actual language of each location as well. Um, and beyond that, I mean, that's, you also want to get links from that area. And if you want, if you can do that, you can rank in any country you want to. Um, I'm sorry, when you say links from that area, because of the advent of cloud computing, how do you know if a link is from a specific area? Let's say it's on a, you know, is it look at the subdomain or the TLD only? Well, it's, uh, subdomain TLD or the language, right? Um, also, if you're the owner of the site, you also want to register that site in your webmaster tools as being from that country. And so if you have multiple subdomains, you can actually say, okay, this subdomain's for Germany, this one's for UK, um, this one's for Australia. Um, yeah, that, like I said, build links, right, from those areas. Because you can tell, like, when you look at a blog, uh, if it has an Australian um, TLD, probably from Australia, but... There's other ways that you can find, you know, I mean, if, if a site's written in German, most likely it's a German site, right? Or Austrian or something around that. So, uh, you know, that's the basic, like, nuts and bolts for ranking internationally. And it's, it's really not that difficult to, to rank internationally. And probably the best strategy is the subdomain strategy. So that way you can use the equity and the brand that you've already built in the engine. Okay, great. And this will be our last question, but... Dave, in terms of the U.S. market, we all know that uh, legislation is coming. I mean, how can affiliates prepare from a from a an SEO standpoint and branding standpoint? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, since you know, if, if you're not making money in the U.S. right now, it, it kind of gives you time to build up that brand, right? So go out there and just put out sites that are putting out killer content with the idea that one day you can drop that blog or whatever it is to just a slash blog and put up a you know, a sales page long term or some kind of uh, affiliate page long term. I think, you know, for me anyway, I keep eyeing that saying it's really like making an investment. We all know it's going to open up eventually. It has to. This country needs the re- the tax revenue from that. And so um, it's just a matter of time before it does. And there's going to be big budgets behind that. You need to get in front of those budgets. I mean, it's like, the biggest budgets ever are going to be after that yeah. market, right? So um, what smart affiliates could do now is just invest in really good content um, with the idea of knowing that it's going to come out eventually. So Perfect. All right, Dave, I know you're super busy. It's been really great having you on. Thanks so much for your time and all the expertise. Um, it's been super, super useful. So if anyone's interested in contacting Dave after the interview, uh, go ahead and send an email to interviews at casinoaffiliateprograms.com and we'll be happy to put you in touch. Stay tuned for future interviews with iGaming industry leaders. Thanks again, Dave. Thanks.